Okay, welcome everybody. We're talking about uh, a subject that is pretty well known, or unless you live in a cave, uh, you probably heard AI. <clears throat> so this is uh, Lance Luke, Martin Pea here, part of the uh, Ask the Marketing Experts webinar series. And we have a topic, AI for business owners, leveraging AI to enhance efficiency and perpetuate and drive growth presented by Expert Media Matters. Um, we actually wrote a book, Use AI, No Wondering Why. I'm not sure um, what this book is as far as ranking, like if it's you know number 10 or number 2000 that was written by AI, but I'm pretty sure um, we were one of the first group to kind of write a book about AI. The title is Use AI, No Wondering Why. Uh, if you're wondering about how you can get a copy, you can go to Amazon and uh, order one. Or uh, if you want to get it free, we'll tell you how by going to our special website and you can get a free download. So Expert Media Matters is presenting and sponsoring this webinar, and that's our a digital marketing consulting company. Also, um, when was it, Martin? Last month or the previous month? Uh, oh, no, it was last month, September. I was up in Hollywood uh, networking with Jack Canfield. Uh, if you don't know who that is, that's a chicken soup for the soul guy. Uh, talking story with him. I wrote a book with him that just came out uh, called Mindset Matters. If you want a, a copy of that book, uh, we'll tell you how to get one free. And why do we do these webinars? Well, we do these webinars to ask the expert uh, webinar series to help small business owners and entrepreneurs build, manage, and market online. And whether you're a one-man operation five men or 10 or 20, or you have a small business, all these same concepts that we're gonna talk about apply to you. And it's not that hard, not that difficult. It's just kind of starting and using AI in what you really need. You don't have to use it for every single thing. Uh, so why don't we go right into it and Hopefully I can share more information. There's an AI learning curve. If you guys haven't used AI before, there's actually a learning curve from novice to advanced. And in the beginning, um, Martin and I really didn't have a clue what was going on. We knew what AI was about. I did a lot of research and, and uh, studying about AI before I even used it. I was kind of curious about how the thing worked. And I figured I don't have hundreds of thousands of dollars to spend investing in AI and see how it works. So I waited until it was available for the public. And then I went, you know, right in. Of course, I started using the free one first see how how well it did and when it couldn't do certain things then i upgraded but the upgrade wasn't that much it was from paying zero to paying twenty dollars a month okay and uh, i'm talking about chat gpt and it's pretty much the same with some of the other you know major ai players so here's the stages of ai adoption Curiosity phase, we're curious. We're wondering what the heck is this thing about? What does it do? It's about like, um, you know, these robots or, uh, you know, remember when you were a kid, there was a cartoon, the Jetsons and they had robots and things like that. You know, was it about that? Uh, we heard about these self-driving cars. Uh, is it about that? Well. It's, it's it's all of those. So the first thing 
before delving into anything is ask questions. Uh, what is this thing about? What is this AI? You got to explore AI, understand what it can do, basic capabilities, and identify potential applications for your business. Now, if AI can do certain things, but it it it's not for your business, then you don't really need to use that portion of the AI, right? So you use AI in your business how you see fit. It's not for everybody, but in the future, it's everybody's going to be using it, right? I'm talking about uh, business owners. So the first stage is you know, we're curious what's going on. Then the next stage is, well, let's see how this thing works, right? So experimentation phase, let's experiment. Let's try out the AI tools available on a small scale. The small scale would be, let's uh, find out uh, these AI players in the AI industry and they offer uh, free trials or free use. Well, let's do that and you know see what it does. So you learn from trial and error and then refining your approach. So in the beginning, take advantage of whatever's out there that's free. In fact, uh, Google uh, uses AI. So when you're on Google doing a search, it's automatically using AI. So you don't even have to, to, to ask it to use AI. And then there's an adoption phase. Well, yeah, it works okay. So maybe we'll continue using it. So adoption phase is you use it regularly to kind of automate tasks, enhance decision-making, streamline operations. And a lot of times, initially, you just use AI for when you're searching for things, you're looking for things, you want to wanna know about a business, or you want to do more research on a certain subject. Okay, so that's, that's your search. Before... It used to be Wikipedia and, and Google. Now it's like everywhere almost. And then the next stage is the mastery phase where you learn about it, you trial and error, and then you finally figure out how to use it. So fully integrating AI into your business workflow, optimizing its use for maximum efficiency and growth. So you're going to use AI uh, to... to the max or as much as you need it for your business. Okay, so how about the impact of AI on business tasks, quantity, speed, and quality? AI is just not about doing things faster or better. It's about doing more and you can do it better and freeing up time for what truly matters in like running, running your business. Okay, so if you let yeah, these it? Monday chores where you could actually use AI for, uh, you know, you, you're not spending your time wisely. And I'll share some time savers of how Martin and I use AI as we go through this uh, presentation. Okay, improve quantity. AI can handle repetitive repetitive tasks allowing you to scale operations without increasing headcount, increasing time spent, or your time bogged down in doing these tasks. So for example, it took me one hour and I'm not I'm not a slow uh creator. I'm not a slow writer, but it in the beginning it took me one hour uh, to create one social media post. And you might say, well, how come? Well, you you kind of want your words to count. So you put your text together, sentences, words, and uh, kind of tweak it here and there and go back and forth. And maybe you have two, three, four, or eight iterations. And then after you're satisfied with that, now you got to go find an image for it. Then Sometimes the images out there just don't fit what the subject matter of your post is. So that's why it takes so long. And and then, so I'm spending one hour creating my post and then I post it on social media. So that's one hour of my time. Using AI, AI can write 
different iterations of, of that one pulse in in seconds, right? And even fine images too. So what took one hour now it takes a couple minutes. So let's let's say it takes five minutes. So what used to take 60 minutes, now take five minutes. Now I have 55 minutes left over for running my business. I'd rather spend time running my business than spend hours on end trying to create content for social media or blog posts or different content for my newsletter and things like that. So to me, AI is worth it. It's a, it's a time saver. Um, I used to pay uh, free uh, chat GPT and then I upgraded and I pay $20 a month. So is $20 a month worth it for me? Of course, because it's saving so much time and, and energy and frustration. Sometimes I have like a writer's block and I can't think of what I'm going to write about. And, and then to me, that's a time waster also. Improve speed. So AI processes data, completes tasks far quicker than manual efforts, reducing time to market and improve responsiveness. So the AI is faster than what I can do to compose different blog articles, let's say. Um, is it better? Maybe, maybe not. But it's like anything, you have to train it, right? Improve quality. So I think when I look back at my initial social media posts, uh, it was kind of blase. Some were really good. Some were mediocre, I would say. Uh, compared to today's using AI, my blog articles are full of information because AI is doing the research. So I can safely say that the use of AI is, is better. It helps me uh, uh, a better creator, a better business person. So improved quality AI tools can analyze data with precision, reducing errors and improving decision-making quality. So it's not 100% perfect. When AI messes up and it goes off on a tangent, it, it, it's either because the user is not asking the correct questions. And you heard of garbage in, garbage out. Well, sometimes that happens. Sometimes AI just goes on the blink, right? And just gives you content that's not even pertaining to the subject matter. And when it does that, we call that hallucinations. The AI is like off on a different track. It's almost like it's on drugs hallucinating. Okay. So you have to reel it back in and say, hey, um, kick kick the drug habit and I'm going to ask you again, you know, what what I want. And and then, you know, it'll come back and you might have to further ask more specific details to get more more detailed information. So it's trial and error. Um, initially, I spent hours because it was fun. To me, it was like a game. Some people play video games. I play the AI game. I just type in stuff and see what comes out. And then I further get further specific or I just change the subject. And initially, um, I was curious. So I went in and, and typed my own name to see what come, you know, what AI would give back. And sometimes it searches and sometimes it finds somebody that has the same name, but it's not me. So I got to clarify it. So I put Lance Luke building engineer and then it, it comes out and I was happy with what stuff that AI printed out. I'm like, oh, but well, this is interesting. So if somebody else goes on the AI platforms and types in my name, it'll have the similar positive information, which is good. There was nothing negative about it. I think the only thing negative was, I don't remember. Let me think about that. 
Maybe um, we didn't provide popcorn for our webinars or something. I don't know. So here's a, let's meet the AI personas. Okay. So you have AI assistant, you have an AI strategist, you have an AI creator. And I'm thinking, right, in the beginning, Martin and I were all these people. So you ever heard of people talking about, hey, you know, this guy has a split personality? Well, that happened to us, except it wasn't wasn't a Dr. Jekyll, or Mr. Hyde. So Martin was the assistant. He was a strategist. He was a creator. He was the guy that emptied the rubbish cans and swept them off the floor, you know, after when we were done. But um, you got all these different people, personas to help you. And it's actually the same person, right? So if AI can be your assistant, hey, that's good. I need an assistant strategist creator um yeah how much you know am i paying am i paying twenty dollars an hour uh or or more to have an assistant come up with all these this beautiful content oh no i'm paying twenty dollars a month and with the ai here's a here's a good thing about ai it's available 24 7 so you don't pay overtime and they're not going to call in sick, uh, and they're going they're going to be available. Well, except when there's no electricity or no internet connection. But okay, so an assistant. What does an assistant do? Automate scheduling, customer follow ups, and routine inquiries. AI can do that, right? And now, um, people are actually building their avatars and. Have you ever gone on, on a company website and using the chat feature? A lot of times you're chatting with the AI. You know, it's not uh, a human. You know, you can tell. Um, so that's an assistant. A strategist, talk about strategy, use AI to predict market trends, optimize pricing strategies, and enhance customer targeting. Okay, strategy. And the creator. As I mentioned before, generate engaging content, design marketing materials, and personalized communications. Now, if you use AI to come up with content or design your marketing stuff or whatever you need, and you're not happy with it, just keep trying. Okay, And it's not perfect. You just got to keep working with it. It's sort of like you hire a, a new human, and maybe this human doesn't know too much about your business. So you have to train them, right? So that's only fair. They, You don't expect them to know everything about your business. They have to. So initially, there's a learning curve, right? With a human, there's a learning curve. With a human, also with AI, there's a learning curve too, right? Great, simple, and effective AI prompts for your businesses using AI. So when you give AI uh, a question or instruction, that's called a prompt. And that's why if you hear this term prompt engineering, well, you know what? Anybody can be an engineer. You don't have to go to engineering school because if you're using AI and you're prompting AI, you're going on chat GPT or Google and you're typing in something, right? Giving it instructions. Your, your title is uh, a prompt engineer or prompting engineer. And there's actually uh, college classes on how to use AI and how to become a, a, a prompt engineer. I mean, there's certificates and I don't know if there's degrees, I think there is, but um, I, I'm not into, into studying and getting a four year degree in that. So the key to leveraging AI effectively lies in crafting prompts that are clear, concise, and targeted to your specific needs. Try it. If you don't like it, try it again or tweak your prop a little or keep adjusting. Here's some secrets on creative, creating effective prompts, okay? Be specific, context is key, iterate and improve. So. If you're not getting the information you need, maybe your question was too broad and you gotta be more specific or you gotta you gotta give it more information so they can use that information and 
um, you know, get back to you. The future AI divide, let's talk about the, the situation we have now. Okay, there's there's early adopters versus late comers. Now, AI was around in the 60s, okay, but it didn't become available to the general public until around November, December of last year. And as far as um, in the news, everybody, all the news media was talking about it in January of this year. So if you're in to AI and you're diving in and it's, it's not a deep dive, it could be a shallow dive or just getting your feet wet, right? In a little tide pool before you decide to dive in, that's fine. Okay, so I would say the early adopters are anybody who's who's into AI this year versus the latecomers who are getting involved in AI maybe next year or, or the next year. Okay, some people are waiting. You know, there's AI wars out there, being that these different companies are just keeping, you know, upgrading. Let's wait until things settle down and then start using AI. By that time comes, you may be a little too late. Okay, so, and when I say too late, it could be the cost. If you get in early, the cost is lower, right? If you wait, it, it may be higher. So, early adopters, businesses that embrace AI now are reaping the benefits of increased efficiency, better customer experience, and improved profitability. And that's that's us. Martin and I decided we're just going to go into it, try it out, see if it works. So if it doesn't, then we don't need to use it. Okay. Early adopters gain valuable insights and experience positioning themselves as in industry leaders. Well, you don't have to be an industry leader in AI, but you could be an industry leader or a business leader in your own industry if you're starting to use AI, provided that it works, right? So that's early. That's like the early bird gets the worm kind of thing. The late covers, there might be no worm, okay? So those who wait risk falling behind in rapidly changing market, losing competitive edge and missing out on growth opportunities. Late comers may face higher costs and steeper learning curves as AI becomes more integral to business operations. So in other words, if you're early in the game, you know, you can get up to speed. If you're late in the game, you're going to have to learn from, from scratch, right? And get caught up. And by that time comes, te technology may be more advanced and now there's more stuff you got to learn, right? So the key is, you integrate the AI models into your business ecosystem or your business. You can start small, doesn't have to be anything big. Popular AI models and tools, there's ChatGPT, Microsoft Copilot, uh, Claude, uh, Gemini, and these are the major ones. I use ChatGPT, sometimes I use the other ones, it all depends. Um, on, on what, what I need it for. Sometimes I want a second opinion and then I try and go back and forth. In, in what aspects of business can AI help you? Okay, let's talk specifically and I'll give you examples of, of how AI is helping our, our business. And if you like that idea, then you can follow, follow that. AI can help you create your website. So we have a website called uh, Best Hawaii Business Directory, and we use AI to help create the website for for this directory. And uh, we we realized that we're using the platform that the directory provided us, but we wanted more. So now we gotta go to the next step uh, and and look at uh, a creator who, a developer who could do more than what the website platform can do for us. But that's just the situation that we're in at the current time. 
Hey, what else? AI can help you create your social media posts. So all these posts are examples of posts that we created. Um, one, one is our webinar. Uh, the other one is, um, oh, another webinar about uh, uh, real estate, using AI in real estate. And then the other one is uh, a music post uh, that was made. So you can use AI to help. I mean, if, you, if you're an excellent uh, designer and you design your own, then maybe you don't need to use AI, but maybe you want to use AI just to give you ideas and then you create the posts uh, yourself, right? Or the image. How about videos? AI can help you create your videos. Uh, these are all uh, kind of sample videos that we made. We make videos promoting our webinars. We make videos promoting uh, all sorts of things, our books, uh, most mostly our webinars, we use it uh, AI to to create videos to help promote our webinars. So, like the webinar you're watching, there was uh, a couple of videos made on social media to promote the webinar. And then, are you into blogs? I mean, blogs are used to be a pain in the butt before because I never had time to create my, my blog posts. And then um, have you ever been to a website where it says, read our blog, you click on and you start reading the blog and you look at the date and it was like eight months ago and that's the most current blog. I, I'd rather not have a blog and that's what happened to me early on. And now with the use of AI, I'm able to, create blog posts, my team, uh, blog posts once a week, once a month, wh whatever I need the AI for. So it's uh, very, very helpful. It saves a lot of time. And no matter what business you're in, it's very easy to create a blog post and people can learn about your business, learn about what you do, you don't, you don't even have to use the blog to, to make it an ad. You can make it informational, educational. And that's what we do. How about newsletters? Does your company have a newsletter? Even if you're a one-man operation, you could still create a newsletter because you can use AI to help. So here's samples of my construction management newsletter. I got... Uh, July, August, September. Um, we sent out a October one too. We have a mailing list, so that's very helpful in content creation. And it's all about content. The more content you put out there via blog posts, newsletter, social media posts, the more your name, your company names out there. That's what you want, right? The more people that know about you, the better. AI can help you create your books. So there's a book, um, Get Know Now, How to Become the Celebrity Expert in Your Field. And that was based on, I, I wrote that book on my own. And it was based on a webinar that I gave on the same subject. There was no AI uh, in, involved in writing that book. I think I may have used AI uh, as a, a grammar to check the grammar, but that's it. Now, use AI, no wondering why. That book was partly written using AI. Okay, so so there there's a difference. And if you go to our website, you can get uh, free copies for, for your own use your own business uh you know hopefully it can help you and we sell these books on amazon but we also give it away free uh to help business owners especially small business owners ai can help you create your webinars so you know our powerpoints like this powerpoint you're watching we use ai to actually help create the powerpoints that we're sharing with you 
AI can also help you create flyers, right? So there's a flyer on window replacement for a condominium building. Uh, there's a flyer that we made about a webinar, Ask Me Anything um, webinar that, uh, I mean, if you look at the color and the content and everything, I, I think it, it really grabs attention. And we don't do this from scratch. We help, you know, we help do it ourselves with the use of AI. So it's uh, very helpful. So we're, we're nearing the end of the presentation and we want to share our EMM Lucky 7 tips. Now, what does EMM stand for? It stands for Expert Media Matters. So our tips for you today, leveraging AI to enhance efficiency and drive growth. Use AI to automate your tasks, personalize customer interactions, enhance decision-making, Optimize marketing strategies, streamline operations, boost content creation, and stay ahead of trends. Now, the key to all this is, yes, we're promoting the use of AI. Why? Because we've, we've used it for maybe 10 months now, 11 months or so, and it's it's been helping. And that's why we're promoting the use of it. You don't dive, you don't need to dive right in and, and pay thousands of dollars. You know, initially you, you would pay $20 a month for the AI program. And if you need other programs for different uh, uses, then uh, that's what you would, you would do too. So um it's, it's not that costly and it saves a lot of time. It, it's a, Worth it investment. Hey, what you missed? Previous webinars was given on all kinds of subjects: uh, branding, how to create websites, social media posts, a lot of helpful marketing tips, and it's all our, our previous webinars are all available on our website. I'll give you the link. What's coming up um, next month? We're talking about uh, expert media matters. If you're a small business owner and you need different things, you need help with uh, social media posting or uh, creating blog posts or websites, and writing a book, you know, we can help you with all that. And then, um, after that, in December, we're going to be talking about our um, Small Business Hawaii organization. I'll, I'll give you some tidbits about that. Okay, here's our website, expertmediamatters.com. And then our um, marketing website is askmarketingexperts.now.site. If you go there, you could find replays of all the webinars that we've given, the videos on demand, our publications, books you can get, uh, download, takeaways, PowerPoints, or the Lucky 7 Tips. That's all there for you for free. And then as a small business owner, if you're doing business in Hawaii, uh, we're inviting you to join Best Hawaii Business Directory now for free. You go to besthawaiibusinessdirectory.com and you can get a listing, sign up, and see what it's all about. It's sort of like the yellow pages, but it's it's bigger. Okay, and we also have sections where in the past, if you're a lunch wagon or you have a stall in a farmer's market or uh, a place at the Aloha Stadium swap meet, you, you couldn't list your business in, in the yellow pages, but you could list in the uh, Best Hawaii Business Directory. So if you're in Hawaii, you're a business owner, doesn't matter what kind of business, you could list. If you're not in Hawaii, but you do business in Hawaii, you can also get a free listing also. 
Okay, so that's available. And then in addition, Small Business Hawaii is a networking association of small business owners. And we formed this entity to help network, share ideas, and help promote businesses in Hawaii. It's hard being a small business, so we decided to put this together. And if you want more information, smallbusinesshawaii.now.site. If you sign up for a listing in the Hawaii Business Directory, you're automatically a member of the Small Business Hawaii. And then we get to the uh, Q&A. You got questions, uh, we got the answers. So um, before that, let me, I'm gonna be redundant here. Use AI to your advantage. So we're proponents of using AI and we're not saying sign up and then use AI for every single thing, but try incorporate AI in different things that you do. Now, I talked about a lot of marketing content that we use AI for, and basically that's what we use AI for, but AI can also be used to generate uh, email lists, an email campaign. Uh, you want AI to help you compose an email uh, letter or a letter, AI can use do that for you. Right. So there's there's a lot of different things. You just got to kind of experiment and see how it can help you. And believe me, it can save you a lot of time and energy and aggravation. So you can ask Martin. He used to build websites from scratch and takes hours and hours and even PowerPoints. And now he's like, taking a two hour lunch because he can use AI and he has extra time now. So let's go back to the Q and A and see if anybody has any questions. By the way, thank you all who are on our Zoom platform and uh, watching on social media. We're broadcasting on Facebook, LinkedIn and uh, YouTube. And uh, if you're not live, if you're watching the replay, uh, you can just post your comments or questions and we'll be able to check it out. We always respond to uh, questions and uh, comments. So we try to keep up. So let me turn it over to Martin, see if we have any questions and we'll go from there. So Martin, I see you're there. Yes, I'm here. And we, we had a few questions that have come in, and uh, let's uh, get to them first. Um, here's the first one here. It says, considering the rapid advancements in AI technology, should business, business owners start integrating AI into their operations, even if they are currently managing without it? And there's a part two to this one, is what proactive steps can businesses take to begin AI adoption and stay ahead of the curve. Okay. Um, there we go. I just uh, <clears throat> took off the uh, share screen. So in answer to the question, uh, like I mentioned before, you don't need to just fully dive in, but you look at like your business operations and your business uh, marketing program. W what what could you use AI for knowing AI can use these different things? Or talk to a consultant who can give you advice on, uh, we spend a lot of time and deal with customers mostly on marketing, on social media marketing or marketing in general um, with websites, blog posts, social media posts, and so forth. Um, not too much in in their operations. Okay, so um, there's AI that can be used to create spreadsheets and a business plan, marketing plan, and those kind of things. So um, how does a business want to use AI? Do they want to use AI to uh, streamline their reservation process because you know they're a restaurant? Or do they want to use AI 
uh, to generate an email campaign for their business or whatever. So you gotta you gotta see like what what help you would need in um, incorporating AI to help you. And we we're doing all the marketing things ourselves, like what I mentioned, social media posts, blog posts, newsletters, and all that. We're doing everything from scratch, writing content on our own and all that. And and now we're we we can actually do a lot more um, in the same time. So in the one hour that I spent creating one social media post, in that one hour, we could create 10 social media posts, 10 blog posts, help with a website, create a flyer, all during that same one hour time, time span. So as you can see, it saves a lot of time and it, it's worth it. And initially, it may not save you that much time because you have to spend double the time trying to train AI and go back and forth. But eventually, when, when AI understands what business you're in and how it can help, then it'll, it'll start saving you time, energy, and, and money. It'll save you money because if you hire a human, another person to do the same task, right? You can compare that, but don't get me wrong. The AI doesn't eliminate humans. Humans are still needed to actually use AI. AI is not going to go and just automatically uh, take over the world, right? I don't believe that, but you, AI is like a partner, a business person, somebody who's going to be helping you. And that's that's how we 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 view it. So I'm I'm not sure if uh, did I answer the question or there was another part to it. Uh, well, I think you answered the uh, the first part. The second part was what proactive steps can businesses take to begin AI adoption and stay ahead of the curve. Oh, okay. So the proactive steps would be let's sit down with the business owner, and and here's what I do. Here's a scenario. Okay, so Mr. Business Owner, uh, you know, you called us for consultation. What areas in your business do you need help in? And then with that data, with that information, then we kind of see how we can we can uh, recommend the use of AI. So because we're heavy into marketing, if they say, you know, um, I... I'm a chiropractor and you know I, I I need I need more business but what do I do do I put uh, ad on the radio newspaper magazine uh, TV and I say yeah that's a good idea um how many thousands of dollars do you have per month to spend right and a lot of times the business owner says I don't have that kind of money uh, that's not in my marketing budget okay so well, what is in your marketing budget, right? Could you spend $500 a month? Could you spend 800? If it's a one-man operation and they don't make that much money, could you spend $100 a month, right? And then we go through and see, are you on social media? A lot of times when we talk to our clients, they, they said, yeah, yeah, we're, we're, we're on social media. Okay, good. And then we find out when they said they're on social media, that means they, they have an Instagram page or Facebook page, but they're not necessarily posting about their business on there. And it's their personal page. So right away, I tell them there's a difference between your personal page and a business page. So you need two, right? Uh, and then... In order to, to be active and you want people to follow you, you got to keep posting. When was the last time you posted? Oh, I think it was like uh, July or something. Okay, so I go on their email account. I, I go on their Facebook account and their last post they made in, in was in July. Okay, so I said, you haven't posted... Here we are in October, you haven't posted anything. How do you expect to engage anybody? Because <laughs> they don't see anything, 
you have to you have to post more more than that like try once a week at least oh i don't know what to post right okay so that's where the ai comes in you need ideas or before we even get get to talk about ai we talk about um let's go to traditional method of marketing let's say you go to make an ad on the radio what do you want to talk about right what what do you want to say and then we use that information the other thing is okay so let's move from radio to tv we're going to make a tv what what do you want to feature right oh well i would uh would, would be good for people to see my office and you know maybe uh me adjusting a patient or whatever okay so that that sounds good so we use that information and we go let's take photos or video and make a social media post and post it on social media oh yeah that's a good idea and then i said well you know what that same video could be short doesn't have to be long and we post that video on your website how about that oh that's good Oh, except I don't have a website. Oh, okay. So let's help you build a simple website that's not too complicated. And it has the pertinent information we need. So we slowly help other business owners. I, I'm surprised to this day when websites are so simple and easy, a lot of businesses don't have websites or their website's so outdated to go on and it's like, whoa. You don't even have a video on your website. Oh, yeah, I've been meaning to put a picture on it. Said, okay, fine. So we give all these ideas. And I said, you know what? We could we could enter your information into uh, using our AI platform and then see what information comes back. So, you know, why don't we try that and see? So that's a step in the right direction. That's like, no AI and then using AI. And it gets it, it gets more complicated if the business is old school, they don't have a website, they they say they do, right? But then they got confused because they thought having an Instagram account was a website and that's what they promote, but that's not necessarily true, right? So Anyway, that was my long explanation to the simple question, but I think it was good. Yeah, yeah, that was that was a good response, and uh, definitely the way to start. the The key is just start using the uh, in your business, where wherever you can use it. Yeah, like you say, I mean, most is, you know, using it for the are using it for marketing because that's where most need the help to get more customers and all that kind of stuff. But the, the next step, I mean, for the for those that's not even there, just use it for something that you can do. Yeah. So, okay, the next question question coming up here is, um, in the event that a business's current budget, oh, it's kind of follow up to the, your prior one, doesn't fully accommodate the cost of implementing AI solutions, what financial strategies or resources can they explore to make AI more affordable? and accessible and there's a second part to this question how can businesses prioritize spending on ai to get the best return on investment okay um that's good so if you if you just want to use ai like chat gpt it's free or if you want to upgrade it's um $20 a month, which is affordable. If a business can't afford to pay $20 a month, then there's something seriously wrong here. Uh, but $20 a month is not going to break the bank. So I would say go on it, use the free one first and see what it can do for you. And then if, you, if, if you're happy with it and does everything, then you don't upgrade and then you just use use the free account, right? So there's different other things that AI can do. And there's many 
different AI platforms that, that you, you can use. So, so Martin, I'll, I'll ask you this question. If a business owner wanted to use AI uh, for whatever reasons that, that they need it for, how much money would would it would it cost per month? Well, Just to give a general idea. Well, like you say, for uh, you know, for the free chat GPT, the platform that we use is uh, is chat GPT. Um, right now, I think it's about about that same price. Okay, so what about? But it gives you much more. It gives you the whole marketing services and those kind of things. Yeah. Okay, so what about if someone says, you know what, um, that's not that's not enough. I I want. Um, I, I want an AI program that that I can build websites and do this, do that, create, you know, different things and all that. Um, and maybe, you know, do like a video kind of thing using AI and all that. So, for instance, like uh, if someone wanted to go into uh, AI program uh, like now site, what, what, what's the monthly fee? I just want to make sure that our our viewers know we're not talking about you got to spend $2,500 a month to, to you know, use a platform. Oh, no way. No way. The, 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 the proprietary system and platform that we use, is, I mean, if you want all the marketing services from being able to do websites, Emails, um, and I guess even even also you know get get leads. Yeah, that's that's the basic uh, marketing platform that we use, and that's it's right now. I think it's about less than hundred dollars, ninety nine. I would say two hundred ninety nine. I mean, there's just another version which you get unlimited everything. You know, and that's, that's the model. Model. Yeah. Okay, I mean, so that's so a full budget. That's a full budget. You know, that's that's your total budget for all these things. So that's my point. So it's 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 affordable because for under two hundred dollars a month, you have all these tools that you need that can do you know these these different things, right? So when I talk to when I get emails and, and calls from business owners say, oh, um, I attended your webinar or I saw your uh, your your company and you guys provide this, provide that and all that. But, um, you know, I contacted another company and, you know, it was between 3000 and 5000 a month. And I'm like, for what though, right? Um, you got to see what the various services are that are, are provided and then what you get for it. So um, the bottom line is it doesn't cost a lot of money to be able to start using AI, right? So let's say chat GPT for $20 a month. We, we need more than that. We want this. We want bells and whistles and all that. Well, we, we can upgrade and and go on the now site platform and and pay the 150 dollars a month for everything we need and um and and more and um i i paying that much and i don't even use all of it i think i use like probably one tenth of what what's offered but i i know it's there and it's just a matter of just kind of locking into these different features and being able to start using it that, that's all i mean it's a, a learning curve for me and uh our our team too we have a bunch of vas that need to learn different programs and things and so we'll we'll, we'll get up to speed but oh, yeah. yeah so that's good i just wanted the people to realize that it's not like all or nothing and a lot of small business owners they don't have a budget of 2000 2500 5000 a month i mean if you're a small business and you have that kind of budget good that's that's great and and use it right um but the ones that do 
are the ones that are paying for uh, TV commercials, right? Ads in magazines. Um, they're, they're paying for uh, radio advertising, right? But you could get the same bang for the buck or similar on a smaller level by using social media, right? If you put an ad, or let's say you put a um, commercial on TV, 30 seconds, how many people see that? And how many people actually are going to call? Now, you can't tell the TV station, oh, I want, you, I want the commercial to only... Um, broadcast to homeowners because we're offering uh you know to paint your house and the, the 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 tv stations don't do that they said we have a viewership of x amount of people that's you know who's going to be watching right with social media you could actually set your your parameters set your target audience so you could send the social media posts and add to only those people that are homeowners and not tenants because the demographics are how you set it up. So you get more bang for your buck when you're able to direct attention and and kind of fine tune who your who your target audience is. So there there's I mean there's a difference and I, I always tell people, if you have the money, go traditional, but then also use some of the money in non-traditional social media and stuff. That, I mean, we've seen it happen a lot of times, so. Yeah, and, and just, you know, if I can comment on this, if you're paying those huge amounts of money for whatever, you're really paying for old technology. See, most of the things now that are, are really um, the new state of the art is all being driven by AI and AI technology. And so, I mean, that what, what's happening is the technology is changing and how things are done in the technology world because of AI technology. And so that, that's what people need to understand is that AI is really bringing the cost of things, you know, for whatever, whether you're talking business or we're even talking, you're looking at even the, the personal side. AI is designed and going to be changing areas in order to reduce the cost to the consumers, to the businesses, to whatever. And, and, and that's what people need to look at. And like you said, I mean, it's a matter of just using it. I mean, the way, the way I look at things now is that, you know, if you think back when you were, uh, around when the PCs came on the market uh, or when the internet came on the market or even when the iPhones came on the market. You know, like you say, the adoption wasn't there. People were kind of hoo-hooed whether uh, this stuff is going to work. Well, we're now at that whole stage where AI is a combination of the PCs and the internet and the, the iPhone generation all combined into one and that's what ai is now doing for for uh for businesses and it's it's also going to do the same thing for the the general consumer it's going to make life totally different in how they do things and and you mentioned about robo taxis actually today there's going to be an announcement by by elon musk about the robo taxis and that those kind of things are what, what you'll see in his announcement today is the kind of changes that's going to be happening, you know, to business and to consumers. And, and that's, that's where people need to kind of open their, their thinking to, you know, we're, we, we, we lived in a whole new world when we went through the eighties, nineties and early two thousands with the, um, you know, the PCs and then the internet and, you know, how now we buy everything online and whatnot. And that's just the next, that's where AI is going to take us to a whole, whole new change. So anyway, that, that's, oh, that's why they're saying uh, this is the AI is a new industrial revolution, right? Yeah, so, um, yeah, I'm thinking, well, what, what, what's next? So, right, right. so anyway, we appreciate uh, everyone attending. I know we're kind of 
uh, nearing the end end of the program. Uh, if you have any questions um, or comments, uh, uh, post them or email us, and then we'll get that to you. Oh, also, um, um, re reminder to if you're interested on uh, one, we got 20, 23 top business owners in the United States and in some parts of the world all um, wrote articles in a compilation book called Mindset Matters with uh, Jack Canfield. And the book is available on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, but we're giving you uh, a free download copy if you go to our website, um, oh, we, we got a special website called mindsetmatters.now.site. And if you go there, you could download the book for free. Uh, don't tell Barnes & Noble or Amazon that we're doing it. Um, uh, I already told Martin to keep it a secret. So, uh, But that's where you can get... Uh, uh, a, a free download. It's interesting reading about my chapter is um, using aloha in construction or something like that. Um, but uh, another person actually from Hawaii wrote a chapter to Susanna Kano um, about her conduit fund and, and giving back to the community. So anyway, um, thank you for attending. Thank you for watching. We're all about helping small business owners. Uh, we got a lot of free stuff on our, our website. So check it out. And uh, hopefully we'll see you at the uh, next webinar uh, in another month. All right. Thank you. Aloha. Mahalo. Aloha.